hello there and welcome to a new episode of the scene series here we paint movie and tv scenes together and have a little chat about them today we're using watercolor and painting a scene from finding nemo this disney film was my favorite film for a long while so even though this wasn't requested this is one i have wanted to paint for ages I've actually painted quite a few fish years ago and I haven't done anything since so I think it's about time. This scene is the one where Marlin and Dory go above the rocks and find a ton of jellyfish. The main reason I chose this scene is pretty much just because it's colourful. It's very colourful, the entire scene is pink, purple and orange. E.T. and 101 Dalmatians both had a red blue kind of theme they were very bright movies too and then pretty woman was quite muted with brown tones because that scene takes place at night i feel like the colors we've been missing are pink and green and i actually got a request to paint king kong and i thought you know what this will be perfect there's gonna be some really great green scenes here and it turns out no it's actually a really dark film and the color palette isn't very colorful at all it's a jungle but there's not very much green it's all really dark so we're gonna have to save that one for a little while i turn to finding nemo because at the very least the fish are orange i haven't really painted orange at all so far it's not a color that is in movies very often my partner actually recommended this scene because the jellyfish really stand out. If you choose Marlin, the scene is pink and orange, and if you choose Dory, the scene is pink and blue. But because the last spread actually had quite a lot of blue in, I decided to go for Marlin. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any scenes with Nemo that had really bright colors like this one, so I had to go for Marlin. From a creative standpoint, I think this scene is more aesthetic than any scene that Nemo's in. A lot of Nemo's scenes are quite cluttered, there's a lot going on, and they're not as artsy as this one particular scene. So we're doing Marlin, and let me tell you, Marlin is one interesting fish. You would not believe how many scrunches and wrinkles are in this fish's face. Honestly, it's along the same lines as E.T. They both have more emotion going on in their faces than humans do. There's a lot going on, and I was just hoping to paint a nice little fish face. But no, Marlon made that difficult. You might be wondering if I rewatched Finding Nemo again to paint the scene and yes of course I did. I watched this and I watched Finding Dory. Although I must admit I've seen Finding Nemo an unbelievable amount of times. It's probably my most watched film ever and I really didn't need to rewatch it. You know I probably could have attempted to paint something from this movie without even looking. That's how many times I've seen it. It's a great film. I'm sure you've already seen it and if you haven't then please do. Basically Nemo is a young fish that goes missing. Well I guess he kind of gets kidnapped by a fish seller and before that his mom dies so maybe it's not that happy of a film really well anyway his dad goes looking for him whilst nemo tries to find his way back and nemo's dad marlin is very anxious he's an anxious boy he's kind of crazy really that's why he has so much going on in his face because he's just kind of mad a lot of the time okay good glad we're up to speed I also rewatched Finding Dory. That was fun. I enjoyed it. I watched it in cinema when it came out and then I got it in DVD, but I've probably only seen it a handful of times. It's a very different kind of film. It's funnier, it's less dramatic, it's just a family friendly Disney film and it's pretty good. The first one has more traumatic moments for a child, whilst the second is just good family fun and it's kind of hard to compare the two. I think the plot is better in the first one. The second is a little bit all over the place, but it has some good new characters and it's a funny film. The painting process for this scene is very simple but I was also kind of nervous going into it because I'd planned for the entire background to be done in one wash. I mean it's watercolor, they're jellyfish, they kind of need to be blurry in the background so I think that makes sense. That does mean though that it's one wet on wet layer. When it comes to using watercolor paint, I think that's the hardest technique to get right. You need to know your paint, paintbrush and the paper very well. 
to be able to manage and control the water. If you put too much dark paint down too early, you need to figure out how to lift it. But by that point, you kind of lose the bloom effect from the paint. On the other hand, if you have too much water on your brush, you're covering up the lovely paint with a fresh water bloom. So it's a difficult one to balance. If you can get it right, you've potentially painted the entire background in like two or three minutes. In this case, it went okay. It didn't go perfectly, but it wasn't a failure. I lost a lot of the white of the page quite early on and couldn't regain it. The only way to go was to put more pigment down and darken certain areas, so that's the route that I took. For a long while, the background didn't look much like a jellyfish, it looked a bit like a blur, so I did end up adding some lines and texture using the wet on dry technique. I hadn't planned to do this, it doesn't look particularly better, but it does make it look like a jellyfish, so that's good. Painting Marlin was odd, it wasn't what I expected. I had some trouble with trying to find the right shade for Marlin's scales and for the shadows, and I think my painting of Marlin did end up darker than he is in the film. It was surprisingly difficult, because I usually add blue for the shadows, but when I put blue on orange, it kind of went this really weird shade. It was a confusing process. But at the same time, this was still a relatively quick painting, and I didn't actually end up using masking fluid. I'd planned to, but because the fish is taking up a good portion of the page, it seemed like I could just be careful and go around the outside, which did work. I think I also just wanted to start the painting. Sometimes masking fluid can take a long while to dry, and it's difficult to be completely sure that it is dry because it always looks kind of wet. And if you don't know what masking fluid is, it's a liquid that you can put down on paper and it will dry to kind of like a rubber consistency so that you can paint on top of watercolor. And then once you remove it and you're all done, you have a lovely white area that's completely untouched with paint. It's an interesting medium. It can be really difficult to use. It can destroy your brushes and it can rip paper. So I would definitely practice first. And they do expire. I actually have a video showing the free signs to be aware of, which I'll leave below if you're curious. It's a little bit funky to see what it looks like when it goes off, but it's informative. So this is the scene that we're painting. I think it's cute. I love the bright colors. I love the palette. And I think this page really stands out. I'm loving how the sketchbook is turning out. I think the tour is going to be pretty cool once it's all done. And if you'd like to have any of these scenes as a print, my imprint store is down below. I've actually just made a 20% off coupon code, which is on screen now if you're interested. Thank you for being here. I really hope you've enjoyed having a chat and seeing the painting process. And if you've missed any other episodes from this series, the playlist is down below. Have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you on Sunday with a new video. Bye bye.